In this video, I'm going to be going over the Italian game from the black side. I'm going to be recommending a setup that's suitable for under 1600 level play based on principled sound logical chess. I'm basing my analysis on what people are playing right now at the under 1600 level. I'm aiming it so that you could just watch this one video all the way through and have the confidence to go out there and play the Italian game from the black side. I'm going to be selecting moves which allow white to make mistakes and basic blunders which we're going to punish right from the outset. So after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6 and bishop c4 we enter the Italian game from the black side and this is very very common at the under 1600 level which is fantastic news for you. 44% of games go into this position if you're playing e4, knight c6 at the under 1600 level. What I recommend in this position is knight f6 rather than bishop c5. Both moves are playable but I've got two very good reasons why I recommend knight f6. First reason is that after bishop c5, white has got options of playing the Evans gambit with b4, right? And that can lead to very sharp aggressive play by white. So we don't play bishop c5, we take that option off the board for white. The second reason is that after knight f6, white has got a couple of poor moves to make, right? Particularly knight c3 followed by knight g5, right? Both these moves are poor. And we're going to take advantage of that. We can only do that if we play knight f6 on the third move. So I'm going to look at this juncture then. So I'm going to tackle knight g5, knight c3, d3 and castles. Let's look at the percentages of play. So you're going to see knight g5 more often than not. Fantastic news. I have got an opening that is going to blast this out of the waters quite a lot of the time. It's a gambit line, but it's so, so good. So fun to play and why it's not going to know what's hit them. Right, knight c3 is a complete mistake. It just goes into the knight fork trick. We're going to look at that one. d3 is the correct move. d3 is played 27% of the time. So you're basically looking at white making a mistake or making an inferior move around about 70% of the time, you know, from this position. And we're only on move three. Right, this is all good news for you. And castles, we could punish castles with taking, uh, with the, taking the e pawn. But we're not going to do that because it leads to sharp play. I'm just going to steer the game into slightly more solid waters, which will sort of tally along with the d3 setup. So let's look at these moves. So I want to start with knight c3 actually, because this is the quickest one to get out of the way, right? And it's just a mistake. It's the knight four trick. Like right? millions of people fall into this, and you're just going to get a better game from the outset, which is fantastic news for you. So let's have a look. Knight c3. What we're going to do, you know, you could play d6, you could play bishop c5, but we're just going to take the pawn, right? And it's a knight fort trick because after knight takes, d5. Um, and, and black's already got a better game, right? You've got a free position. And uh, the correct move in this position, as you can see from the diagram, is bishop d3. The idea behind bishop d3 is that after, let's just put that on the board actually, after bishop d3 takes, takes, white still hangs on to the bishop pair. But white's not going to do that in your games if you're below 1600. What people play in the vast majority of games, or the 55%, is to actually take the pawn. So you probably get this position on the board, right? And you're just in a better position already, right? You've got the bishop pair. White's got a complete free game, nice and easy to play. And also white can fall into some traps. So let's have a look. Typical move here, knight c3. Most common, most logical. Gaining a tempo on the queen. Just simply drop the queen back to d8. So after we drop the queen back to d8, white probably castles play bishop c5 right and then if rook e1 we just castle and we leave the pawn b because if white takes take takes then we have bishop take, king takes queen takes so i'll just show that line again right takes 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 and if king takes we have queen winning the rook right so we just leave that pawn there it's a bit of a poison pawn in the position but even if white doesn't go into this position right and plays well, sensibly, for example, d3 in this position, we just carry on with the game. We're still better. We're still better in the position. And at this point, it's entirely up to you what you want to play. I would recommend playing around with all of them. That way you get to feel the position yourself and you get to choose what you prefer. I do like this move, uh, a6, myself, because what I want to do is keep this bishop in play. 
right? Because this bishop's usually one of the strongest pieces for like in the Italian game. So what I, I don't want to do is lose this bishop to this move or have to retreat the bishop back. So I might play a6 myself. And then if the knight comes, I took the bishop back on this long diagonal. We can often score a lot of tactics along this diagonal. So I'm going to look at the pure Italian setup, if you like, with d3. So white does the right thing. White plays d3. Right, it's content just to sort of develop. Maybe white's going to go c3 at some point. Uh, maybe to prepare d4, maybe drop the bishop back, something like that. But d3, what we're going to do in this position, we're just going to play a sensible chess. We're going to play bishop allows, like, castles is a correct move. Allows this silly move. Knight g5. Like, I'm not sure. This, this is played quite a lot. Like interchangeably, 21% with castles. We're just allowing, we're playing sensible moves, sensible, logical chess, and we're allowing white to play just some moves that are not very good. All right, so after this, for example, let's just carry on. Knight g5. All right, what we're going to do to that? Kick it away. No, we're just going to castle. All right, castles. And then at this point, again, you know, it's kind of up to you. All of these moves are sensible. A6 for the, for the reason I've already given. You know, d6, d5 is playable. I would just play around and experiment with what you you know you prefer. Play all of them, right? Get a flavour for the Italian. You know what do you like? If you want to go more solid and slow, d6 is the way. If you want a more open, aggressive game, then d5 is the way. A6, yeah, that's a logical move. Uh, probably not necessarily at the moment because the knight still took stuck on d1. So you might wait while the knight comes to c3, right? So a sample continuation, for example, might be d6. Knight c3. Now I would play a6. Because for the reasons I've already mentioned, I'm going to put the bishop away to a7. And then knight d5. Again, you've got options. You could take the knight in this position, right? Or you could, you know, you could carry on b5, things like that. Example takes, and then bishop takes. And then in this position, you know, you, you're not, you've got a nice solid structure where you've not done anything wrong. You've not made any rash moves. You've got a very easy game. Uh, you know, it's at least equal. Probably slightly better, probably equal. And you're just going to carry on and play it in the additional Italian way. You can play h6 at some point if you want to, or you can play the queen to f6, play for a kingside attack if you want to do that. Took the bishop away in a7. And you can just start a kingside attack to start building up the pieces, right? You might also want to try and get a knight either onto d4 or to this square. But, you know, white goes into queen e2, bang a knight onto d4, gains the tempo, and, you know, keep playing. And just play it, get, gather a lot of experience, right? So this is solid, traditional uh, chess, and, you know, it's, it's good stuff. The next move I'm going to look at is if white castles, which is fairly rare, it's the least likely option of all of those four options that you're likely to face. But this is very quick, and it makes sense presenting this now after I've just shown you the main lines. So in this position, white might try and castle, right? And if they try and castle, what they're hoping for you to do is to take the pawn, and you know they're going to drum up an attack. You can gambit the pawn and drum up an attack. So if White wants that, right, then we're just not going to give him that. That's that's my logical approach. So we're just going to carry on and play Bishop C5, right? And you know they might, you know, carry on this move or whatever the move they play next, uh, D3 or C3. They might just want you still to take the pawn, uh, and we're not. We're just going to play D6, right? Because they don't want you to do that. So we're going to play it, and then, and then let's say Knight C3. Same thing, a6, and we're carrying on. Basically, we get the same types of positions. It could even transpose exactly into the same positions we've just looked at, and that's easy for us to follow and understand. Coming up next is the thing you absolutely must know, which is the knight g5, Ulvestad variation. We're really going to have some fun with this one. So this is it. This is the move I absolutely detest, right? Knight g5, this comes up, like I said before, in the majority of cases, 35% chance you have got from this position, getting this on the board, which is massive, right? Knight g5. I hate this move. I hate this move with a vengeance. It's not actually a mistake as such, and strong players play this. To me, it's just unprincipled. It's moving the bishop and the knight when we're just leaving all these pieces, you know, in the home squares. And okay, you might be able to say, well, actually, there's, there's reasons for it. But we're going to punish white for this in the vast majority of cases. And, you know, please, 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 if you can punish white from this position, I thank you from the bottom of my heart because I cannot stand this position. So what we're going to do in this position, we're going to play d5. And after takes, we're going to surprise him with this move, b5, which is the Ulvestad variation. 
and it's absolutely powerful. It's very, very strong. I have had hundreds of wins in this line in like 19 moves, 20 moves, things like that. And you'll get them as well. And let me know if you do, because thumbs up. So in this position, the correct move is Bishop F1, which is played in, what is that? 4% of cases. So basically you're going to get a good game, a better game in, in like, what's that? What's the maths on that one? 96% of cases, right? And what White's going to generally do 64% of the time is take the pawn, right? And thank you very much because we're going to take, uh, we're on the bishop, we're on g2, right? In most cases, bishop will take on c6 the vast majority of time and we take and we're still on g2. So White will castle and we play bishop b7. And the idea is what we're going to play, like this knight's just looking stupid, right? Good, right? We're going to kick that away at some point, but not yet. We're going to play bishop c5, we're going to castle queen side, kick, and we're just going to launch the pawns at white's king, and we're going to crush them and win them, which will serve them right for playing silly unprincipled chess. So anyway, in this case, for example, f3, and white's already lost. Right, stopping the batterer, stopping the checkmate threat, f3. And this occurs in 52% of cases of under 1600 level. So you're just going to get this on the board quite a lot. Bishop c5 check. This is a sample continuation. You don't really need to jot these moves down or anything like that. Just look at the idea of the potential of this massively aggressive opening. It's it's brilliant. It's one of my favorite openings, as you, probably, as you can probably tell. So after this move, this is a fantastic continuation. H6. Right, we kick the knight, the stupid knight on g5, back to uh, h3, and we're preparing to play this move and then this move. This is very, very simple stuff. G5 straight away, for example. Queen E2 targeting the pawn. The castle queen side. Say, go and take the pawn if you want to. Right, because she'd lost now, basically, completely lost. I recommend just G5. And if knight comes back, rook G8. This is a sample continuation, like I said. Takes, takes. What do we play in this position? We can just take this. We can just destroy. White's king sign. As soon as you get used to this attacking sort of uh, opening, you'll be playing these moves in your sleep. You really will. Checkmate. Right, you're going to get that. That type of attack countless times. Punish them. This is a typical type of structure that you might face in the later middle games. What we've got here is a bishop tucked away on a7. Good stuff. Nice solid setup with d6. e5, c7. And king has gone over to h8. And we've unpinned. And we've kicked the still silly knight back. And we played g5. And we've got options now of playing moves like this. Right? Hitting the bishop. And then actually, we're not just hitting the bishop. We get into f4. And the knight in f4 is going to be really, really strong. Really, really powerful. And here is a potential sample continuation. So knight h5. And then you might come across moves like h3. Which just blunders the bishop because of the pin. Right? And this is quite, quite common. And, you know, it could be that there's a queen. You know, and then we've not played g5 and whatever against the bishop on g3 and a bishop on h7. Just look out for this sort of tactic. But this is a type of thing to try to avoid because what we've got in this position is knight on d5. And then this is a bit uncomfortable. This pin is now uncomfortable. And white's just threatening to take this and we have to take back with the pawn, which is not necessarily horrific, but because we can just took the king away and bring the rook across. You know, you can play that type of structure, but generally it's probably not to be recommended. And what we really should have done instead is like black should have maybe stopped this happening before. Right, it's so d6 here. And this is, I think, a little bit of a problem uh, with this move. d6 in this position allows this move. We can deal with that by playing b5, or we could play h6 now. If you're playing h6, right, expect to have to play g5 as well. Right, and then be prepared for sacrifice ideas right, on g5, which is, is playable, it's fine, but it can be a little bit uncomfortable to play those sorts of positions. So just, you know, I, what I would do is bring the database up and study these sorts of positions, you know, what you don't want to get into prior to playing them. But it's okay to go out and play, make mistakes, and learn from that. Incidentally, I have put all of this in a, an elite chess study, and I'll put the link in the description so you can have a play around. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you like the content. Thank you.